Ah, uh, here we are again. Oh my, it's another, another week down. I love it. And whenever each week passes by, you're just thankful that we made it to another week, right? It's optimism. Think of that book of Jeremiah, remember? I knew you before. I knew what you're going to do. And I think sometimes I wonder what I'm doing, but then I realize there's a, there's a reason for everything. There's a psychology behind everything and even the wellness and well-being. And that's what we're going to talk about today. It's really fascinating. And even an author, a licensed professional counselor, health coach, and so much more with when it comes to emotional intelligence consultant. And, and you don't want to miss this episode of the Bob Jeswold Show along with my co-host, Joanne Kogel, coming up next. Personal power, people positive, the community of connection. This is the Bob Jeswald Show. Welcome, everybody. It's great to be with you. Boy, we got a lot going on. We, we have a more condensed version here today, so we're going to cram a lot of information in 59 minutes. <laughs> Hopefully close to that. I try to rain Bob in today. Yeah, no, we're going to have to rain me in. And speaking of rain, mm-hmm. we don't need rain for this Saturday. We've got a big, big thing going on with Joanne Kogel. Before we get into our awesome guest today, Joanne Kogel, my co-host, of course, uh, is is excited about a big challenge going on at Kelway Gardens and invited anyone in the U.S. to come down and check it out. All right, we've got the Callaway Half Marathon Marathon and 5K happening this weekend up at Callaway Gardens. And uh, it's going to be a great event. It's on Saturday. It starts at 7.30 in the morning. It's going to be really cold. So 7.30 so in the morning. So bundle up. We start at 7.30, so the half marathon and full Although marathon. if you're from the north, it's not. It's cold, no, it's cold. of course not. I was in Pennsylvania. It was minus 5 last weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The wind chill veils. I got a niece. It's like 40 here. A, so I want you to. Great. You think it? You think that's cold? It's balmy. My, <laughs> you're from Canada, Joanne. So you, sh- you. This is why you got thick skin. Negative, negative. Listen to this. Negative twenty five wind chill values. Wind chilled warnings. That is unacceptable. Yes, unacceptable. Frostbite like that. My niece and nephew are up there. He's uh, stationed up there at the U.S. Embassy in in Ottawa. Excuse me. The senator's up there, so he's in Ottawa, Ontario. So uh, speaking of all that cold and everything else, JoJo, uh, we got Patriot Challenge going to come on board with the Kelly Fitness Series. Yeah. want everyone to know that's a great thing, too. When we talk about fitness and wellness and all these good things, Patriot Challenge is here to help support this year. We're doing Gallant, Gallant Few again, yep. and you guys are getting behind it, along with, uh, of course, uh, DWS, which is Darby's Warrior Support. Yeah, yep. and uh, I think Brandon Tucker is also, he's from our gym, and he is setting the world record for muscle-ups yes. this weekend as well as part of uh, the Patriot Challenge. So speaking of, thank you. Yeah. So that'll be a big deal. So, you know, and we're going to go live up there. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of excitement. And what makes it even more exciting is that we have Dr. Kelly Merle Baez. She's right here. Uh, I like to consider a friend, knew her for many years. And Joanne, she wrote a book called Fit Shrink. Uh, and that's when I started getting introduced to her about that. And as a, you know, a licensed professional counselor, health coach, and much more, Dr. Baez, tell us, how are we going to change our ways in 2022? <laughs> Well, you know, I think it, it, first of all, thank you, Bob, for having me on your show. This is, this is really exciting to be able to, um, to add into this great conversation that you're having about fitness and wellness. Um, I think that, you know, really what, what's most important here, the missing piece for the fitness and wellness puzzle is mindset, is psychology. Um, You know, we, we have some great um, science behind, uh, you know, how to stay fit, how to stay healthy, how to get, you know, the strongest, best we can be. But in, you know, when, when the rubber meets the road, a lot of people find themselves kind of stuck and not being able to follow through. So that's where the psychology comes in. You know, we kind of dive into um, what's, what's really standing between you and, and your goals. Um, and usually once we can kind of, you know, work through that, work on some, some thoughts and thought distortions, that kind of thing, um, the path gets really clear. So it's, it's kind of exciting. We hit roadblocks, you know, many of us mm-hmm. do. We let the emotion get in the way. We, we have different things going on in our lives. We make excuses. Is that, what is your biggest excuse you've ever heard? Or, or people say, I just can't get over this hump, Dr. Baez, what do, what do I do? Mm-hmm. The, the biggest excuse I've, I've heard and, and most common is I just don't have time or I don't have energy. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's my favorite one that I could get on a giant soapbox about. Mm-hmm. Yep. Absolutely. You got yeah. your soapbox. Go there we go. It. I'm about to get on it. Um, and, you know, and that's true. We're, we're all very busy juggling a lot of things. But, you know, when it comes down to it, 
it's really about learning to set boundaries and have tough conversations with our bosses or with our spouses and how to juggle kids. And, and again, those are the kind of underlying issues that um, can make saying yes to wellness really difficult. You know, when it comes to that, what, what is our, you know, I've heard Joanne talk about, she's got a boutique gym uh, and, and you as a counselor side, it can kind of work together. I would think somebody who is, mm-hmm. a fit, you know, she's in a physical fitness train, educated in that you're educated in the, uh, almost the psyche of it, you know, as a professional, mm-hmm. you know, counselor, um, even somebody who's an intelligence consultant too, when it comes into this, we've got a lot of folks that come to you. What would be the type of person that would come to you that says, Dr. Baez, I, you know, I'm, is it people necessarily, I think of somebody overweight or is it somebody just like an average person? It just says, look, mm-hmm. I don't know where I'm at. And you may just come to them and say, look, I'm reading you. I'm thinking is you know, the psychology of this whole situation is that you need to get outside, get some, some uh, blood pumping. Is that mm-hmm. usually the, is that the prescription do you think many times or are we, are we looking at medicine sometimes or is this merely somebody I'm going to give you a routine? You know, I think, um, you know, a lot of people who come to me um, are basically it's it's that restless, irritable discontent. Maybe they've started to have some health problems pop up and and they know, you know, we, we all know, like you need to get out, get need to get active and 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 kind of work on some of those things. But again, there's the those roadblocks, whether it's a mindset thing or stress is out of control. Um, and so what they'll do is come to me and um, you know, we'll talk through that. Uh, but typically it's, it's somebody who's dealing with some initial health problems. And I, I'm the problem I'm having right now. And this is, I do this every year and, and for 10 years now, run ranger run is what started this whole operation. And I had a nephew that was in the ranger regiment that knew someone and, and Corey Smith was this particular ranger who, uh, came back from Afghanistan. You think of the men and women that are serving and comes back home just to find out that his wife and his child leaves mm-hmm. and goes back home to Indianapolis from Fort Benning, Georgia, where we're in this area here. That's 565 miles. So mm-hmm. um, he felt suicidal, put a gun mm-hmm. right up to his head. I mean, he, he literally called people. He was to that point, uh, Kelly. Mm-hmm. And, and then eventually, and Joanne knows the story really well, it's like, I, I got to do something. And somehow or another, something got him and his guys, get your fanny, get home. I'm going to run. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get home. And I'm going to do it through the whole month of February. It took him 28 days, uh, mm-hmm. 10 years ago, and wow. uh, 2012 and February. And he did it. He did the whole mm-hmm. journey through snow, rain, cold. And you know how the weather is right now at this time of year. And, sure. uh, and he, he made it through. And he got there and collapsed. And his whole life changed. He's mentoring people now. We get to the, those kind of situations like that. Um, I'm trying to motivate people here in a workplace to just sign up for this Patriot Challenge. And Patriot Challenge, when you do this, you're going to help support people. Dylan's one of them. Lewis behind the camera is another one. <laughs> These young guys. Dylan came up with an excuse this morning. Ready to join? What, what All right, you, I, did, oh, I did. Okay. Give it to and me, Dylan. Dr. Baez is on the line. Dr. Baez, let's hear what he just had to say. Hold on. It was, listen to this. It was a pretty legitimate excuse no, before wait, I say that. We're going to have Dr. Baez <laughs> weigh in. Pedal, She's pedal, weighing pedal. in. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so basically, cool. no, no, basically I, it starts at 8, right? Oh, great. I wasn't sure how long it lasts. I was basically, all I said was I work until 11, all right? I might still do it. No, but that was an excuse. <laughs> yeah. Dr. But Baez is going to she's, she's gonna take. Okay, so Dr. Oh, Baez. Dr. Baez, what am, I, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> so the the... The first thing I heard you say was, I don't know how long this is going to be. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> ah, so that's good. Exactly. Yeah. And, and actually, that, that's one of those, those details that trips people up. You know, mentally, um, if you don't have enough data, your brain's like hard pass. And so, you know, that can create some anxiety and make it difficult to say yes to. So, you know, that, that's one of those things where you, you definitely want to um, take that next step, get the information. Um, so that you can get out there and join it. It sounds like an amazing program. Yeah, it does. Um, I mean, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a, I can be a little bit lazy sometimes. I'm trying to go to the gym recently, though, Bob. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm just I'm trying to take care checking. of myself. But that was interesting, <laughs> Dr. Baez. You did pick up, you, you picked up almost that first word. Is, is that what you look for? Is it the first words that come out of somebody's mouth that sometimes is, is really where you start diagnosing what this person's mm-hmm. coming up with? Or is that... That it's it's definitely listening kind of between the lines, okay. um, and and usually the the truth of the matter is in there somewhere. 
I like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And you break it down like that and you do it so fluid. So it, and that's really what we run against. You know, I, I, I go through emails. Is it better to do things? And I'm, I'm looking at Joanne too, because Joanne weigh in on this. Because I, is it better to do emails to people to get them motivated? Or, or do you go individually and try to say, hey, I need you, you and you to get out of your rut. Come on, let's do it. You find Which one's more effective or both? Um, you know, I mean, obviously we want as, as much reach as possible for these important programs, but when it comes to motivating people, it's that human connection okay. that's that's definitely going to be more motivating. Um, you know, when someone feels like they've got that connection with you and they're going to be a part of something. Um, because at the, the end of the day, we all want to be, you know, that that sense of love and belonging is a, a basic psychological need. And and so having that belonging, you know, part of something this important Um would definitely be motivating. That seems to be the theme. We said it with Mike Jones last week, Joanne. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we do in person, obviously, but uh, I do emails and text messages and phone calls, mm -hmm. and I do it all. Yeah, so whatever it, it takes. And if once you get to that point, then the personal connection clicks. I mean, you. I mean, let's I mean, face it. So everybody responds just a little different. So not. A, I yeah. mean, like. If you called me, I probably won't answer my phone. You don't. She doesn't. <laughs> Can I just say I, yeah. she doesn't? I, I'm like such the biggest pain in the rear to her. <laughs> so, but is that is that healthy for me to do that? What you, you got to get in touch with somebody. And I love Joanne, and she knows that. And I, I work for her, so I'm trying. You know, but there's times or just little things. I need and I just know Joanne. It's just people. This is Joanne, but I'll. She just falls off the face of the earth, and I wish I can do that because Joanne knows how to tap out when she needs to tap out. Is it healthy for me to keep pursuing that? Or do you just sit back and wait for the person to come by? Is it okay to do that? You know, if if someone's sort of pulling back and you continue to to jump in and try to connect, there may be some resistance there. Um, and so, like what Joan was saying, you know, maybe maybe try and text. Um, you know, maybe try and email different people, respond differently. Um, you know, I think everybody again is just so overwhelmed. Everybody's going one hundred and ten percent. But whatever it takes to make that connection and meet people where they are, I think that's so important. Joanne, could I have a hug? No. Okay. So, <laughs> no. Well, there you go. Absolutely. So I, I say, not. I, do, Kelly, I, I lose not. every time. <laughs> so, nope. So, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Red no, no. lanyard. Come on now. So, I, you know, two weeks in a row, Kelly, I want to point this out. Our guest last week and now you were featured in Forbes, and you guys are from the Columbus, Georgia region. I, I love this. This is south of Atlanta, about 90 miles. And for you to be featured in Forbes, Reader's Digest, and now on the Bob Jeswold show with Joanne Kogel. No, I'm, I, I think it's. It, that's a, that's quite an honor. How does that come about? Was this something with your book, or is this because of what you study or what you do? Um, this was more um, coming in as an expert talking about trauma, um, <clears throat> and and this had to do with you know the the police and and some of the trauma, um, and so that's what I was invited to to speak on. It's just the trauma side of things. When so, you say um, that, is it through co you're talking about with the latest with the lack of police, just the stress we're all facing, and and crime rising all over right. the country. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an important topic. For oh, sure. you're not kidding. I mean, the, the news at this time of this podcast, you know, two police officers shot and killed with getting into that for a minute. And it's interesting. I mean, how do you, you know, how do you counsel something like that? I mean, how do you counsel something when you can't necessarily recruit the right people in a position, but we need these people in these positions. So how does Dr. Baez get up there and, and, kind of get these people kind of circled around. I mean, to get Forbes, the Reader's Digest, uh, I mean, it's a nice, it's an honor. I mean, what did you, mm -hmm. what was some of the salient points? What was the germane topic that you were talking about to to grab their attention? Um, you know, for, for Forbes, I was talking about the way that PTSD sets up and sort of how we approach treating it. And, and I think that, you know, in terms of helping people understand, um, what what these these officers are going through it is helpful to understand the severity and and the the experience of ptsd so that was what i was really focused on um you know with the forbes article joanne kogel works with a lot of military men and women that came back um joanne what do you what do you see what helps your men and some women that come through crossfit csg that have ptsd what do you what do you usually how do you Get around that like if do you identify it do you find them really releasing do you find yourself having to coach a little bit differently to get them working out or do something um i mean i'm fortunate in the fact that people in on my platform seek us out 
So that's interesting. Um, okay. I mean, <clears throat> CrossFit or functional fitness in in that arena. I mean, it has a reputation for being good for people with PTSD or mm-hmm. or general wellness or from the mental aspect because it involves in the uh, like a team. It's it's done in small cl- in a small class, small group environment, and so you're building teamwork. There's people cheering for you. Um, it's a, it's a community within itself. So it's a little bit different than you know Bob with PS- PTSD going yeah. for a run down the road. Gotcha. No, so there's a com- there's yeah. a pretty heavy community community aspect. I mean, there's even gyms that are built around um, PTSD or sobriety or. Um, things things along those lines so it, i think in my in my gym and in my um crossfit arena um the community aspect is what people seek out i mean we do a lot mm-hmm. of personal training and um and you know and, and that personal training you know without uh without being licensed therapists it's being <laughs> being a licensed being a therapist <laughs> yeah, with yeah. With those, with those clients and those might be just people that are not comfortable in small group environments, but um, there's a lot that comes out uh, in those situations too. Do you delegate, yeah. Kelly? I mean, do you, do you have like a list of Joanne Kogels or other people you can recommend? Would that be your prescription? Mm-hmm. Hey, I think you, you would be the type of person that needs to go with Joanne Kogel and do a CrossFit. Or, hey, mm-hmm. you need to go be an outdoor, you need to do some gardening with folks over at the botanical gardens to get some therapeutic kind of calming or, or you, well, like I said, with Darby's Warrior support, you need to go on a duck hunt, you know, with these guys and mm-hmm. decompress and, and have some camaraderie. Is mm-hmm. that, is that kind of what you do sometimes or? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, there's this um, kind of debate and when we're talking about trauma, whether it's, it's top down or if it's bottom up and top down refers to like processing emotionally first, mentally first. And then we have the, the body kind of respond because PTSD is a whole body mind experience. Um, whereas some people work better with what we call bottom up. So getting the body kind of engaged and, you know, relaxed and that functional fitness is so important. Yoga is so helpful. Mm-hmm. And then once that's on board, then, you know, the, the mental stuff um, starts to fall into place a little more readily. So absolutely. I mean, you know, when it's, when the time's right, I, I certainly um, make that recommendation to virtually all my clients to, to go and get active in one way or another. I like that. Hey, let me ask you this. What, and, and if I'm getting too personal, let me know what, what inspired you to do what you're doing? I mean, why would you do this? <laughs> you know, it's like, right. there's got to be something that drove you. What, 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 what was the driving mechanism for Kelly Baez? You know, I, a couple of things, you know, from the, the health and wellness standpoint, um, I have a condition called polycystic ovary syndrome. And, and so, you know, that makes, um, you know, weight loss very difficult, but it also has, if, if it's left untreated, it's got a whole lot of, of health issues that, that can pop up down the road. Um, so that kind of got me started, um, you thinking about fitness and then, you know, from the trauma side of things, um, you know, quite frankly, I know Bob, you know, my dad real well. Yes, and, Joe was um, great. And my, my dad is just, you know, the kindest steady Eddie and I've watched him kind of be there for people and sit with people and, um, and, and that sort of inspired me to be the type of person who could sit with someone at the lowest, scariest moments of their lives. So I think that's where that, where I got started with, with this. You have your father's eyes, you know that. And oh. not that I'm looking, I've, you know, you and I have been together a few times before, you know, talking mm-hmm. about your book. Well, look at Joanne's, <laughs> get Joanne's <laughs> face here, Dylan. Okay. Do that again, Joanne. <laughs> you guys, for if you're listening, if you're just listening, to this is an audio uh, podcast. Joanne just took her hand, picture it, and just hit her top. Right. I, you know, I, I just, what's like my condition? Palm emoji. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, what is my, what's my dilemma? What do you, if you were to analyze me, I mean, why oh, do no. I do that? I have a tendency <laughs> to do that. I say things and I just sometimes don't think I say it because I just feel like I'm going to say it and it doesn't come out right sometimes. What is that? <laughs> Send him you know what? In the mail. That is you, Bob, being completely <laughs> mindful in the moment. And, and that's what makes you so good at what you do. No, that's nice. But I just, <laughs> without, without being gratuitous, I just, I mean that sincerely. I, I look at your, I, I see your dad and your dad is very mm-hmm. calming. I'm serious. When you go to gym, when yeah. he comes in, he's, he's the nicest guy. He's got that that way about him. And I, and I can mm-hmm. see that. I just thought I'd put that in there. And I, as I said, Thank I mean, it'd be gratuitous in a gratuitous fashion, <laughs> so to speak. Uh. So I, here's, 
my the thing that I love about you is that you do you have you have that way about you. You took something even with your own personal life, and then now mm-hmm. you're gonna you take it in that passion and do that. And I always try to find that with everybody. We all have something that we want to do. What is it that your age groups that you're looking at? If anyone's listening, is this who is your biggest audience? Should I say who are who's your biggest client when it comes to your age group? Who, who would that be? Age group. I tend to work with people, um, you know, from their mid twenties to usually around 50 or 60. Um, obviously I, I, that's just a, a ballpark. Um, but I think that there are some people, particularly for, for kids that there's a special training that goes into that, um, you know, working with kids, but definitely necessary. I think, you know, our kids are, are dealing with just as much as adults. So the sooner you can help kids learn healthy strategies, healthy mindset, the better. I think it sets the stage for, for health going forward. We have, girls. She's got a daughter, Joanne. I have three girls. One's, one's 36 with two grand girl babies. I have, and I have two teenage girls at home. The self image with women, I'm just going to talk about women first and I'll get to guys here in a second. But the women that I noticed today, it's this craziness right here, this phone, this mm-hmm. day gum selfie, take thy selfie of thy selfie self. And mm-hmm. they, they get so wrapped in they're so wrapped into that. And I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. You can't cut them off from it because it's now a tool that's even recommended within the schools. It's, it's part of their way of learning, th- the mm-hmm. way they research, the way they gain information. There's a healthy part of it, and there's, it is a parental, parent responsibility to say, okay, enough is enough. Put that diagram phone down here. Go to bed. You don't want the electronic thing next to you. Mm-hmm. But there's also, I see this so often. I did, I mimicked this joint on here. If you can watch this at WRBL.com, you'll see it. it is upside down. How did you see you're paying attention? <laughs> <laughs> this right here. So Kelly, you can see me. Picture, you got the phone and you're sitting there going. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then work it, work it, Bob, work it. The tongue, what, what is the tongue thing in the thing? What is this? Is this makes your chin look skinnier? It does. What is it? Yeah, but it does make it skinnier. But what, obviously, but it's an image thing, Joanne. What? Why are girl? Why are men and, and guys are doing too? But nobody more wants women. to have a double chin in a picture. <sighs> but that's why you hold the phone up above your head. Yeah, that's it. The above yeah. the head thing is that what it is? Yeah, and the southern little arm out, but yeah, out, the, chest out. Is that what? It is? Yeah. Jeez. See, she Come knows on, it. Come on, Bob. I don't see you doing that that much, though, Joanne, on your no, social accounts. I don't. I avoid the camera. You do avoid the camera, but go. you are very observant. So is that what Joanne just said, Kelly? Is this something, is this good or bad, or is this, Bob, you're just looking too deep? No, I mean, I, this is a, a new a new generation, new sort of cultural experience that we have with our phones, particularly with, with young girls. Um, the, the body image stuff is, is here to stay. The comparison is here to stay. That's, that's kind of what um, social media marketing is all about is, you know, do you measure up to whatever this perfection is that you're looking at? And, and the, the selfie after selfie is kind of that, am I enough kind of question, okay. you know? Um, and, and I think it's important to have conversations with girls about that, you know, and um, not only, hey, you know, all that's airbrushed and fake, right? But also um, getting curious about how it makes them feel. You know, there's a, a saying in counseling, if you name it, you claim it. Um, and naming the emotions that come up will keep you from getting emotionally hijacked by it. Um, so I, I think that that's, that's part of the conversation that we need to be having with, with young girls. It's just understanding how does this make you feel when you're looking at as far as the, the body image and that, that elusive, you know, whatever is perfect, um, you know, the, the difficulty is that for girls with, with body image issues like that is that it, it works like a mirage. So it's like you get to this point and, you know, you know, maybe you're doing more squats or whatever, and you get to this point and then it's like the goal, whatever that might be, moves away from you. And so then you got to work harder. And it's um, that, that comparison can definitely lead to um, maybe not depression, so to speak, but like lower mood, feeling bad about yourself because it's never, you can never get to. Um, you know, that, that ideal that's been set up. That's, and it, I think that's, you hit the nail on the head. It's like you, you, it's where you draw the line. Cause it's like, I, and I hate to use this with Michael Jackson, but he starts with the, you know, the nose operation surgery. Right. And then he went from this today, it got to the point where he got freakish. You know, it's like mm-hmm. when you stop, when I see celebrities and stars, I, I'm not a, I like soap operas, Joanne. I do. I'll admit it. Really? Put, occasionally, I like to engage. It's only because my wife, she DVRs it, and I start watching it. Uh-huh. Fun <laughs> so, facts with Bob. I didn't see that one Holy coming. moly. Here we go. Huh. But, you know, but the cool thing, 
Okay. <laughs> Like I, Days of Our Lives? No, that's old. I think that's even off the air now. I think it's Young and Restless is my favorite one. Huh. Yeah, Y and R. And 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 but when you you watch these, she's, I know. Poof. Mind is blown. <laughs> I thought you watched. Don't you watch? You remember no, Vic Cummings? No, not at all. I talked about Vic Cummings used to host it up at CHCH TV no, 11. No, my in guilty pleasure right now is cheer. Cheer. There you go. That's okay. Yeah. That's great to binge on. I love yeah. it. Huh. But you look at that. Okay. These actresses, and there was one on there in particular, Tyler, what's her name? Ta- Tyler. I have no idea. I can't remember. I oh, know Kelly helped me. Do you watch that at all or not? Or just no, they don't. They no, Kelly's like, Bob. oh, Kelly's probably like, no, I'm no. working. But she's got, <laughs> they do the plumping of the lips, the, the, mm-hmm. the this and the that. I, I'm okay with a little Botox. I get it when some women do that. And it, I don't even know if some guys even do it. Too, if they're, but it's okay. I get it if it's subtle. But when you go to the extreme where your lips don't look like lips anymore, your face mm-hmm. looks like it's going to crack if you smile. And, and I'm being real. I mean, I want to... No, Joanne, I'm just telling you. I know. And Kelly, a little bit of ring. I told my wife, too. She had that little... You got a little crow's feet. That's sexy. It's it's normal. It's average. It's part of... Hey, here I go again. Dylan, I got these young guys looking at me when I said sexy. Are you guys scared of sexy? Dylan? No, it's not it. It's not it. It's just the... Ke- Kelly, Bob is going to come in for an appointment, okay? <laughs> okay, okay gonna, I need an appointment, Kelly. Bad. Really bad. Kelly's already dying. She already figured me out. I'm going to find out at the end it of this. It sounds like you're describing... Treatment that. plan is written, Bob. <laughs> is it good? I want to know what it is. Kelly is, is I, blacklisting and blocking you right now. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> but you know what I mean? You know, is it is it just me? Or am I just... Am I weird? I mean, I, but this is, is this is what our society is. This is what it's coming to that everybody feels they can't stop. As you said, mm-hmm. we do a little and we just keep going. The imaging of ourself and what you do, the well-being, we just keep pushing it and pushing it. And, and when do you drop the gauntlet and say, that's it? Do people, mm-hmm. could we get to that point? Could we ever get to that point? You know, I think that the, the, the degree to which you reference the, the ideal beauty on, you know, what you're seeing and the images and, you know, uh, on, um, you know, even the TV shows and that kind of thing is the degree to which you're going to be unhappy and continue to push it. Um, I think that the saner thing is to, to say, okay, that's not ideal. That's airbrush. That's whatever. Um, and start to really focus on that sense of self and, and, and self-worth without the validation of going over the top. Cause again, it, you're never going to get there. Nobody's ever going to get there. Hey, have you had anybody who's, you just feel like, I don't even know if I can help this person. Mm-hmm. That's tough. Unfortunately, it does get tough. And, you know, I, as counselors, we all have our, our strengths and our talents. And, and so, I mean, there have been cases where, you know, maybe there's a higher level of care that's needed. Somebody who's got some expertise in, in body dysmorphia, um, you know, certainly that's, that's come up because it, it can derail your life. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what did you, what do you think if you look what was a, Without sharing, you can't get personal information, but what was probably one of the toughest challenges you've had in your mm. in your practice? You know, I think that, you know, when I'm working with uh, with clients who have had trauma that they've been holding on to for years and years and years, thinking that it's so bad, nobody could ever possibly fix it. Nobody could ever make it better. Um, it's both the most challenging and the most rewarding. Um, because there is so much that we can do to help trauma. But, you know, again, trauma kind of, it affects the body and the mind and the brain. And, and so it takes time. And so you know, there's, uh, there's some challenges that, that come with that. Um, but all in all, I mean, that's, that's why I do what I do. Um, it's, yeah, and you're so, it's so you're, rewarding. And you're good at it. We know that. It, to do this, because you seem to have so much patience. You got to have patience with people because they know that's tough. Mm-hmm. What's the longest would it take? What's the average, if there is such, I don't even know if this, this is kind of rhetorical, but is there an average time span to get someone fixed like that? You know that that's in that space? You know, it depends on a, a couple of things. So, you know, if it's it's a one-time trauma event that happens, that's one thing, and, and it's less complicated. If it's something that's been going on for years or decades, um, sometimes that takes a little bit more time. Um, there are different therapies that, that work a little bit more quickly than others, but usually I work with a client for a couple of months and we've made some really good progress. That's good. That's good. I mean, come yeah. on, I would think, I mean, yeah. you know, it's like you think of somebody making a body change. How long does it take? It's pretty Joe? good odds. Yeah. What about you, Joey? Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, have you seen which your, give me a situation, Joey, where somebody came in, I know you worked with a young man who was, he, his, his legs, right? We lot, he, uh, oh, he's, no, he's paralyzed. Excuse me. Not like he's paralyzed. You're one. You got somebody who's got uh, some TBI. T- yeah. Yeah. 
So in a situation like that, how long does it take to get somebody where you think they're finally getting out of their rut? Or do they continue to go with oh. you? Or do they quit on you? Do they? Mm, I think fitness is a little bit um, a s- tricky. That's, that's, that's a tricky one. Yeah. I mean, I've got clients who have been with me for five, five six years. Um, and, I mean, like, one of them is car accident and it's that's his physical therapy and if he stops then we kind of come to a screeching halt so um and that's his exercise and some people um you know i'm their therapy Mm -hmm. three days a week and for some Mm -hmm. people i see them more than their spouses see them so Mm -hmm. um you know it's uh it's it's kind of interesting i mean most of we call it a leg which is uh length of engagement um I mean, we we see most of our people for about 24 months or so, and then uh, either they move or they move on or they go into classes. But um, but I would say a, a lot of my a lot of my clients stick around for a long long period of time. <laughs> so you have a lot of military yeah. spouses, and you have a lot of military active yeah. and post active duty. Members is that fair? You but you got civilians yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah. civilians yeah. too. I mean, fifty percent of our gym is military, so um, I mean, it, it comes and goes quite a bit. So they're like, you know, every fr- or every every January is PCS season. December, January is PCS season. Yeah. They all move, and then they all come in in February, um, and then same thing in June and July. So we're we're pretty transient, um, but the but the population that sticks around that lives here. <laughs> Uh, is very very consistent. So, so in the military vernacular, people listening PCS is a- after they do their couple years at this at, a, at yeah this installation. yeah sorry PCS is permanent change of change station. Change of station. So, so yeah yeah. So. But it's interesting. No, I mean, yeah. and do they need how many of them have Doctor Biases in their life? You know. Oh, you I you know, you know I um I mean I see I go to a counselor. Okay. Once a month is like the highlight of yeah. my month. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's like the best day, the best hour of my month because she can't say anything to anyone about anything and I can just unload and, and mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about anybody talking about anything. So it's, I mean, it's like the highlight of my month. You know, so, you and know. I think, and I am a huge proponent about mental health to, to people. Like I, I have sent, uh, I think all of my clients to my particular the person that I see. Good. So, to point where I don't think she takes any <laughs> patients anymore. So I go, well, well, we got Dr. Baez here. <laughs> there but you go. Send him over. Yeah. Send him over. She's yeah. sitting there right there. We, we, so. we, we have her. If that's a, that's interesting because, Kelly, Joanne, and I'm going to say this here. I mean, I can only yeah. do so much. So, I mean, I mean, I can sit there okay. and listen, it's but fair. I'm also not like, you know, I'm not licensed. But um, so, I mean, sometimes it's out of my scope. And that brings Dr. Baez in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joanne has an interesting, what she does is, you know, even as a race director in her other gig, which th- th- what brought us together, is these triathlons. And they're big. And, and there's different aspects of it. That's, your, that's people who like to swim, bike, and run. And there's do athletes who only do two of those operations. And if they're going to, you know, do the, uh, excuse me, the swim and bike, and there's relay teams and everything else. But anyway, there's, there's, a, a part of Joanne that when things really hit the fan, Kelly, I mean, <laughs> really, really hit the fan. And I'm just thinking, I can't believe it because I'm not like this. I mean, I've seen some bad stuff happen. I mean, sometimes we have people seriously injured. It happens. You know, athletes. You know, sometimes- Bob, you have asked every single th- uh, psych- uh, the therapist that we've had on this show, what is wrong with so me? So I need to find, I'm trying. <laughs> you have not- asked them. <laughs> is, is, is that the common theme? You I, have tried you to figure out with? what is the problem? Why am I like this? I'm you trying to be them. subtle here, Kelly. I can't be subtle. He's curious. I'm just curious because I want to find out. No one seems to be able to hit it. And I'm, I'm going to ask Dr. Myers, <laughs> what yeah. makes Joanne so calm, cool, and collected in a personality like that? And because those kind of things. Don't be jealous, Bob. There's always things. I'm, I know. I'm not a hater. I just want to know. I want to be yes, like Joanne. <laughs> I just want to be like Joanne. <laughs> I want to be able to get to that that place where she's not, she never flies off the handle and she keeps mm-hmm. it all. Is it because she's keeping it in? What makes her not even get shaken? And it's not mm-hmm. saying she doesn't have control of the situation. She does. But it's in a way that she does it where she does, even with somebody, if somebody came in her face and started shouting at her, she would be. 
Oh boy. Okay. Oh boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that. No, but I'm just saying, how? What makes a personality like that? That's all. I mean, I just f- find right. it fascinating. I grew up in an Italian family, right? And we're, we wear our heart in a sleeve, and things are flying, and you're yelling mm-hmm. one minute, and next minute everything's fine. But she is it? Is it upbringing? Is it just her personality, or is Joanne kind of holding back on something? You know, I think that that probably all of these are true. You know, just she just probably... hit her head in the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. I'm sorry, Kelly. I didn't mean to interrupt. No. You. Not at all. I, you know, I think that um, a lot of it is personality. You know, there are some people who tend to be a little bit uh, cooler under those sorts of circumstances than others. But, um, you know, also it, it comes from just experience and emotional regulation, like everything is going off the handle in front of you and you, you have to kind of emotionally regulate yourself to be able to handle it. That said, we have to, we have to acknowledge the value of those people who are calm, cool, and collected and also people who have a ton of energy to give to a situation. Um, and Can you, you know, imagine? My, oh, sorry, no, no. sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. I did not mean to interrupt. No, not at all. But I think that, you know, we have to acknowledge that, you know, so like, you know, Bob, you've got so much energy that, that you can really, you know, help people find that, that same energy. It's contagious. Um, and, and, you know, we need all kinds of people in the world. Okay. I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, I, Bob, th- can you imagine can if there was a staff of, 10 bobs. <laughs> hey, I had a boss one time tell, he said, geez, I can only clone Bob. <laughs> so be, so be loud. careful. Be careful. <laughs> I'm, you know, would you describe me as bombastic or demonstrative? Oh, no, there's or both? A word. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been playing Wordle? I've been playing Wordle. No, I just <laughs> had some, I'm going back in my memory bank. These are people, this is things that people said about me. That's why I'm saying it. I just, I looked it up and I'm like, really? I don't know if I, I guess maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And it's a good, it's not a bad thing, I guess, you know. Mm-mm. And it's I married, now my wife is in a strange way, is like Joanne, she's very laid back like that too. Is there a reason why people like me are attracted to it? And she could have been attracted to me because we're both opposites. For the track. record, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, back well, okay, this up. Okay, well, here there we go no again. attraction, okay? I know. No, 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 I was saying, I was saying, I was okay. saying, I was saying to my <laughs> okay. wife. <laughs> okay. She oh. was checking her email. Oh. She was not was paying tra- attention. I was trying to reply to somebody. <laughs> my, my. She thought I was talking. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Oh, I was just delete saying, that. I said she was like Joanne. You need to delete know, that, Dylan. No, no, don't delete it. Delete, you delete, keep delete, it. delete, delete, no, delete. No, I want it on there. <laughs> but I think I. I it's, oh my it, god! <laughs> this is so terrible. Not at all, Joanne. I kind of thought that was neat, though. But uh, but seriously, is there is there something? Is there you know when people are too much alike, not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it can definitely tip the energy too far in one direction so that there's not um, there's not enough focus to get traction in getting things done in life. Um, and so certainly there can be, you know, between you and your wife, that there's there's usefulness in having that balance, for sure. Okay, Joanne, say it. She's, she's, no, she's, that's good. I'm <laughs> glad that that was... Okay, she's turning red. She's still... i never seen Joanne embarrassed. <laughs> like yeah, that. it's hot in here. <laughs> Well, you got a you got a fleece on, Joanne. I did, fleece. I did turn my <laughs> heated vest off. Though, Joanne so. wears jackets even in the summer. Just letting you know, she's cold blooded. But but I don't. She just keeps her body temperature nice and even. But I here's here's the thing that I'm worried about. I'm, I'm shifting gears a little bit. I love what you did because going back to why Forbes recognize you and Reader's Digest. Okay, that being said, the police and everything that's going on in the world today. I mean, we. You know, we're in trouble times. There's no question about it. And and not no one needs to even get, you know, even wipe out all the political part of this. Where are we headed? Where are we headed when it comes to just the way people respect law and authority? Where where do you think that's going from what you feel and see, Dr. Baez? You know, I think that um, unfortunately we're seeing a trend towards more reactionary um, sort of responses, um, less less attempts to understand, less attempts to find common ground. And, and basically that follows the trend of the other thing that I'm seeing, which is less emotional intelligence across the board. Um, and, and unfortunately that does result in a breakdown of understanding. And then when we have that disconnect, um, you know, sadly the, the violence can come from that. Um, but that's, that's the trend I'm seeing, unfortunately. I think that really, you know, there's, um, there's definitely a call to action here to focus on communication and connection and overall emotional intelligence. Is there anybody, have you, I mean, and, and I can't say this either. I always want to ask, I don't want to ask about your clients and stuff, but it could, could you see 
our leaders, let's say, even in a local scope municipality kind of area, do you see any of them that need some well some counseling that would help get through this thing? Is there? Is, there's nothing. There's no shame in saying I go to a counselor. I mean, Joanne mm-hmm. just said it about her. She's very matter of fact. <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with that. You talk to mm-hmm. it, it's it's healthy. I mean, talk to mm-hmm. a third person. Do it all the time. Whether you're talking to your spouse, friend, or whatever, or your counselor. Is that something you think that would be helpful? Because I, I look at leadership now. I'm not picking on anybody individually anywhere, but anybody can draw a line anywhere they want. But I'm just saying, what is going on? I mean, because really, because is it that there's just nobody wants to deal with it? Or why are people in leadership that shouldn't even be in leadership? It's crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that you know, there that there are situations where leaders kind of put get put in positions and then they're they're in over their head, but you know, it's, it's hard to be vulnerable and say, I don't know what I'm doing right now with, with all of this. Um, I think working with a counselor is so helpful because whether you do a deep dive into, you know, childhood trauma or anything, you know, that's not even that necessary. Let's say um, it can be helpful, but it's not necessary. A lot of times when I'm working with people, it's like, it's talking about thinking errors and it's like, you know, learning about your emotions. It's not just happy, sad, angry. It's, it's like, are you furious? Are you, you know, like getting to the nuances of, of those emotions, the more you can do that, the more emotional regulation you have so that ultimately the better communicator you are, the better listener you are. Um, and that, I mean, that's counseling. That's, you know, where are you right now? Where do you want to be? That's my job to get you there. Um, I love that. Anybody's out there listening. If you're in a leadership, if you're, you know, you're, you're a senator or you're a, a mayor or you're whatever, t- t- or, you know, council member or whatever it may be, get in, do that. I mean, there's no, no there's nothing wrong with that because I see so many things that come out that are so extraordinary. It doesn't make sense. Come on. Tony Soprano, the leader of the mafia, fictional character, of course, in Jersey, he went to his counselor, right? Well, I mean, I think at that point it becomes, I mean, you could almost refer to it as coaching. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, that was one of the reasons that I went. It's like uh, one day I was driving down the street and I was like, you know what? Business is lonely. So <laughs> I <laughs> feel like I've never been to a counselor. I'm going to check that box. And it was the best hour of my life. And I was like, <laughs> sign me up. Yeah. So great. Uh, I, but it, I think it, I mean, you don't have to, I, I have no childhood traumas, much to my parents. You know, I have great parents. So even though my parents will probably be like, Whatever she's lying, but what, um, did, what was a kid that you you punched in the mouth at one time? Oh my goodness! I'm that was sorry, just a basketball I, game. A basketball game. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, was just like, I thought you were just still... a basketball game. It was you a just heated moment. Right hook, Joanne. You know, yeah. I can't picture her doing yeah. that. But, but uh, that's probably the worst thing she's ever done. The dark moment of my life. Um, but uh, I mean, I think at that point it just becomes a, a coaching. Uh, I mean, you could turn counseling into coaching. I mean, I like health, I mean, health, health coaching is just. You know, you can bill mm-hmm. it to insurance. <laughs> so, so. It's all skill development, right, psychoeducation. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Would it now do, Kelly, does, mm. does Dr. Baez go to a counselor? I what, do. You do. Okay. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Is this, how does that happen? How do you get in a room with two counselors that are <laughs> licensed like you? Do you ever correct one another or do you, you know, you get what I'm saying? Or, or is it just, you got to get to a space where you completely relinquish and like say. You're overanalyzing me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, there, there can be those moments where you're like, wait a minute, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. Um, but, you know, really at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're humans too. We, we have a, a set of skills in this arena, but we're, you know, we're, we're human beings with the same kind of issues. And um, one of the first things that, that I told my counselor, and, and I've heard this from other counselors that, that I've worked with, um, that I've counseled, is in this room for this hour, I am not a counselor. So, like, I'm taking that hat off right now and I'm just going to, be my mess, you know, okay. and, and we'll, yeah. we'll talk it out. Yeah. Well, I like that. Is there such thing, you know, when people say this and it's, it seems people say it all the time, sounds rather rhetorical. I'm going to use reverse psychology on them. Is that what, <laughs> tell, tell us about reverse psychology. It, it's yeah. It's just kind of a, a trick to try to get people to, you know, to, to kind of actually um, push back a little bit. Um, I, I would say that that's probably not something I use very often. Um, 
And so that, I always thought it was just some, you know, people just use it and they just throw it out there like with your kids. Well, if, yeah. I, if I were you, I would use a little reverse psychology. I'm like, like tell the child that, uh, tell them, don't tell them that, that you can't be with that person or you can't uh, play with that young kid next door or whatever. Um, say the opposite. Okay, sure. If that's what you want to do. Is it, is it healthy or is it just kind of a crazy it- It ends up being a little bit, I think it's well-intentioned, but usually it ends up being a little bit on the manipulative side. Um, I think that's a parenting I I, I opt for. Okay. So no manipulation. I don't like that kind of, only type of manipulation should get would be from a a chiropractor. It's a parenting myth. (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's like an old wives tale or or something. Absolutely. Okay. So we got to the bottom of uh, reverse psychology. (laughs) 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 I was saying playing hard to get. How about that one? Playing hard to get. Is that another one of those or? I think that's middle school love. Is that middle school love? Yeah. (laughs) I think so. <laughs> I'm just trying. I'm throwing some of those out there. I remember that one. Just play hard to get. And so it does. Yeah. I Well, I did it with my wife. It did actually work one time because she ignored me in the beginning of our relationship. Here I go again. Oh, my. But it's true. I did. I When I ignored her when we were dating, this is true. She thought I was coming on too strong. She was used to men. And I'm not pick. Gosh, I'm going to get myself in trouble here. Yes. I'm going to get myself yes, in trouble. But I'm going to say it because I feel like I got to say it. I'm from up north. I'm just going to say I'm a Yankee. I'm up north. And guys, she would. I open up doors. I do that. I'm not saying southern gentlemen don't do that. I'm not saying that. She just chose. I'm just saying this, John. She just, there were some men she dated that were like, didn't do those things. And she mm-hmm. felt that, in fact, and I may be looking at this the wrong way. I think it was more she, in the beginning of relationship, relationship, felt that I'm a woman. I can open up my own door. You don't need to do that. that that's where I think it was. Power but she, to the she. Is that what it is? Power <laughs> to the she? Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. And maybe I'm overthinking. It wasn't yeah, another guy. Because I want to say, because I got a lot of good uh, Southern friends, man. They're very gentlemen. But I'm just saying, I was doing that, and she was almost like put off on that. So when I stopped doing it and scaled back a little bit, all of a sudden, is do you get what I'm getting at? Is that mm-hmm. something, what else could I have done in that situation or anything? Or did I do the right thing? I, I mean, it, it, you guys are married, so it sounds yeah, like it seems like it worked. It worked out great. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Wait a minute, let me think. Well, it's how many years past our silver, so yeah, we're we're already there. <laughs> Poor Teresa. Now it's in my face. Teresa, silver. I'm on team Teresa. Yeah, if no, you ever listen to yeah. this, she doesn't listen. You know what? I got to get her to listen. I tried her. Her attention span's very short. I'm, she said it's got to be 15 minutes long. I'm like, no, I don't do 15 minutes. <laughs> I just don't. Oh man. We'll put her on that. We'll we'll cue it up to that part right there, Doctor. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they call me Bob Silver, and not for nothing. There you go. So, <laughs> so I, you know, I think all these things that that people got to consider. It's it's okay to uh, recognize within. We we've said this with Doctor Berg. I think she um, she was on several weeks ago. Doctor Baez now is saying it, and, and other guests were were not licensed therapists or anything, but but have this. Um, way of saying that it's okay to, you know, Joanne getting that unction while driving mm-hmm. to go see a person and talk to them, licensed therapist, and someone who knows and understands that and who can uh, get to the bottom of it, like we did with Dylan mm-hmm. Hansen here after he opened his mouth one sentence to say why he had an excuse <laughs> not to go at 8 o'clock in the morning because he's working 11 o'clock at night. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? That's another <laughs> word we used to say. So, Dylan, do you feel any different? I, you know what? Now, now I kind of have to go. He is motivated. <laughs> if anyone, if anyone's like listening to this and uh, going to, or not tomorrow, uh, going on Saturday, Saturday, then uh, yeah. if I'm not there, you know, hold me accountable. Okay. <laughs> we do have Lewis in the house. He's training Kelly, and Lewis has been. Now I'm watching. Lewis is working then. <laughs> now I'm I'm looking at Absolutely. Lewis, and Lewis has been Don't screw it up, Lewis. Completely, <laughs> he's very observant. He's being very careful. He's not chiming in. And mm-hmm. is this Lewis is, this, is smart? So yeah. <laughs> is what's what's Lewis's deal here? I don't know if you can flap. I'll put Lewis at wrbl.com on the camera here for a second. Let's see. We'll see Lewis. All so right. Lewis, how do you you want to chime in there? Take that microphone, young man, and and tell us your your training. Be but careful, Lewis. What you say, Lewis? Everything we're saying here. Yeah, please be careful. <laughs> say, <laughs> state your age, serial number, and rank, please, sir. <laughs> Wait, um, as in, like, will I be going or? Or are you are you engaging in this conversation in the terms of understanding poor that Lewis. maybe we should <laughs> all see Lewis. we should get we should talk to people find out what there's things that we make excuses for in life or we can't get past What's certain your barriers. <laughs> what do you, yeah? What is it that you need to? Is there anything you think you need to work on, or is there anything you would like help in? Uh, do you find yourself time management 
is my main Ooh. thing. Okay, very good. Yeah. Dr. Baez, mm-hmm. is time management a problem with everybody? Is, do you think that's something that most of us have an issue with? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, time management, it brings together a couple different things. It brings in, you know, boundary issues with, with work and family. It brings in, um, you know, focus and it brings in just kind of getting curious about your motivation for each thing. Um, but what I like to do is make a list. And, and this comes from a book called Eat the Frog. Oh. Um, and I think it's Brian Tracy, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong though. Um, but anyway, he says, you know, make a list, do the hardest thing first. Okay. And or like put it in order from hardest to eat easiest do the hardest thing first. And then as you get tired and you get decision fatigue throughout the day, your tasks are becoming easier. So it sort of offsets. And, and so you, you end up being more productive with your time management. All right. That's yeah. bringing us full circle, Bob. That is. <laughs> it, it, you know, back to ribbit, time. ribbit. So yeah, time. We're talking about time management and I'm getting a, uh, a finger that's waving like this, which is a circular <laughs> motion. It's better than this one. <laughs> better than this. Right? So we're about eight minutes out, seven minutes out, Kelly. I want to make sure that I get everything in because there's, there's still. <laughs> how are you doing, Kelly? In time, we got to get you out the door at your. We're, at your we're time. doing great. That was good. We're okay, good. Great. So time management is looking good there, Dylan and Joanne and Melissa. <laughs> so, hey, you see, I think I'm doing all right. Uh, I think I'm doing so okay. We're proud of you both. Yeah. So uh, eat the frog. Go back to that for a minute. When we say it, because I know frogs taste like chicken. If anybody's ever mm-hmm. had frog legs, they do. It tastes like chicken. Hey, <laughs> Lewis, you guys know fried something? tastes mm-hmm. like chicken. Oh, is that what it is? Come on. You just buzzkill Joanne. Good. Joanne the buzzkill. I, I, I thought it was unique. I thought it was unique. So, but eat the frog. Where, where, where does the frog come in the analogy of that? Is there a particular... Yeah, he, what, what he's saying, the premise of the book is, you know, you, you start your tasks from hardest to easiest. And he says, you know, if you eat a frog first thing in the morning, your day can't get any worse. It's going to get better. Gotcha. As okay. you go on. I mm-hmm. like it. So I just want to restate that so people at home can understand it. That's a great idea. Let's, let's do time management hardest first and then work our way down. I love it. I love fit shrink. Tell us again, uh, it, it, I keep going on it. Is that something you want to talk about or are you kind of not want to discuss fit shrink? Oh, I mean, I'm happy to. Is that something um, new or do you got something latest or do you want to? That really kind of goes more into some of the coaching that I do. Um, okay. And usually with, with that, um, what I do is work with people who like, they're like, I know what I need to do. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, it's just a matter of how do I get it done with all these other stressors in my life? And, and so really the, that part of my coaching is, is focused on, getting rid of the roadblocks, working on boundaries, working on any like limiting beliefs. And then that way we can bridge the gap between where you are now and then your fitness goals. That's great. Where do you practice now in what town? Um, I'm based in Columbus, um, but I, I see clients all over the state and actually in Florida as well. Um, I work online just like this. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was doing it before it was cool before, before the pandemic moved everybody online. So this is just a comfortable, convenient way to meet. And Inveg- very inventive and, and smart and, and a lot mm-hmm. of foresight there before yeah. we even had to actually do it. Does it, does it change? Does my therapist have to be physically so I can touch? Like I have Joanne here. I can, I know she's there. It's something tangible or touch me. I, so I, I just did it just for effect. <laughs> so <laughs> I just want to feel her face. <laughs> feels like a ah. sheep. <laughs> We've got a sheep next to me. Ah. <laughs> no, In my there. bubble. There you go. I know. I'm sorry. I do that. I have and that's part of my demonstrative personality, Joanne. Kelly Bias is it's okay. It's okay. So what is it? Is it okay? I mean, do we get, I mean, we're here with you now. I don't see it works. I mean, it'd be nice to see in person, but is that different? When, when you made that statement earlier, we want, you know, we want to have that interface with people, mm-hmm. but is this, does that change the way we work with our therapists at all? You know, I, I think for the, the vast majority of people, it doesn't really change much. Um, that said, some people do have a preference to, to meet in person. And I think it's really important to honor that. Um, my, my take on it, you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in my life, you know, being in rural communities and, you know, driving 35, 40 miles to get to a therapist was really not, not a possibility for sure. a lot of people. So, um, you know, this is a, this solves a, a lot of problems for a lot of different people. You know, maybe people want to just work on their, you know, have a session on their lunch break or, um, you know, maybe they live too far out. So this works for a lot of people, but it, it just depends. That's great. I mean, so yeah. you can, if you wanted to, you could physically, like if somebody's watching, listening right now, they could just pipe right in and just say, hey, look, I want to talk, talk to Dr. Kelly Bias because she's 
you know, maybe 200 miles away, but boy, I could, I'd rather talk to somebody who doesn't know me. She's a distance away, mm -hmm. free and clear. Let's do it. Yeah. Whatever. We're not going to run into yeah. each other. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Do you find that to be an issue? Because I often found, you know, is that something? Because, uh, you know, some people, it's like, let me think of it this way. As a Catholic, here I go again. Oh, no. It's coming, Joanne. <laughs> it's, I feel it's coming Good back. Thing we have four minutes. Oh, no. Here it comes again. Okay. So I only got four minutes. I'm getting to wrap almost. But you go to, pre you're confessing your sins. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you go to confession. Okay. Which I need to do. I haven't gone. But when you do that, my thing is, are people really confessing what they need to do when they see you in person? Because mm -hmm. when you go to your, the idea is to be behind a wall with a priest and you're confessing sins, but your voice is recognized <laughs> in some mm -hmm. cases. I often think that, because I know there's got, I know some pastors, they got it all, and that's Bob. Oh mm -hmm. boy. But then you're not necessarily revealing, let's say, what you should. Are they, Do you think mm -hmm. there's some things you're not getting out? You're not extracting everything out of someone when they come see you? It, it could be the case that, that some people feel nervous about that. You know, what if I run into this person at church or at, you know, at the coffee shop. But um, so from that standpoint, yeah, having the, the almost assumed, not a nominimity, but, you know, just a, a distance there, um, that can be helpful because I think it is important to, to dive in as much as you can um, when you're working on some of these hard issues or you're kind of getting things off your chest. So you know, a little is great, but but diving in is is even better. People dive in. I mean, you, you just mm -hmm. need to go all in or you're not going to get the, the, the right treatment. And you're not going to mm -hmm. have results or whatever it may be. So don't be afraid, not be ashamed. Is there anything, and I'll leave you at this because we're almost towards the end here for you. So, look, I'm doing good on my time management. <laughs> I'm just telling you, JoJo, look, 28 Lewis, after. you see that? You see that? Look at that. Look, I'm, I'm doing good, guys. Well, they've Watch been, and learn. They've been, they've been, they've been <laughs> helping me behind the scenes. Here's, here's the thing that I think is kind of neat. Do you, have you ever blushed? I have to see this. I, I got to say that. Is there any, has anyone ever come to you to say anything and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're saying this to me. <laughs> you know, what, have you got to, because what do you do in a situation like, because I don't know if I could, would you, you could hold back laughing maybe. Sometimes somebody says something, you're like, are you kidding me? Do you feel that way? How does a counselor put that veil on to be neutral? I mean, I, I that would mm -hmm. be hard for me. My face would tell it all. You know, I, I think that's that's part of the the emotional regulation. That's part of the training that we get. You know, we you know I hear something, I'm like, okay, you know, going into my skill set. What do I need to do now? Um, but you know, at the end of the day, something that I really honor about the work that I do is that we're all humans. We're all struggling. Everybody's got something that that they're they're deeply concerned about, and and it's my job to again, you know, just kind of get them from point A to to where they want to be. You know, kind of carry the torch. So. Um, it's an honor to get to do what I do. Um, and, and so it, it definitely helps me stay pre uh, present and focused. Well, thank you. It's an honor that you were here with Bob and Joanne today and Lewis and Dylan, thank our producer and director. And Kelly, you've been great. Thank you so much for being honest. Thank we you. have a heart out. I, I wanted to prove to everybody that I can do time <laughs> management here. So you can uh, do stuff with your kids and make sure All we get right. that ready. We appreciate that. So just like Michael Franks would say, don't be shy. He's sing a song. Don't be oh, yeah. shy. Here we go. Go to your counselor <laughs> and dive in. That's right. Get everything done. That's right. Dr. Kelly Baez, we got a link right here at the Bob Jeswold Show to make sure if anybody else would like to connect with, with Dr. Baez or just any of us and just find out more and how you can uh, find out how you can dive in. All right. Solve your Thank life you, problems. Bob. Thank you. It's good, good seeing you. Guys. Take care. Good seeing you too, Dr. Bias. Thanks for the smile. She's a sweetheart. And and for all you at home, thank you for joining us this week. JoJo looks good. We got uh, Kelly Gardens at the end of the month here, January and, and outside of Fort Benning. So make sure we all. Yeah, one twelfth of the way to December. That's right. Let's do it. And we got much more. Check, check out tricolumbusga.com for all the latest so you can get fit. And you could come anywhere in the world to visit us. We got great destinations. Stop here. Um, you can stay overnight and much more. We make accommodations from athletes from all over. Seriously, we do. We have people yeah, come all from all over the over. world. Yep. We come here to Columbus, Georgia. So check it out. Try ColumbusGA.com and Bob Jeswold show here on WRBL.com where you can see the, all the funny antics behind the scenes with Joanne. And you can check us out right here, of course, as always on, on Apple, Spotify, and iHeart and anywhere else you get your podcast. That's it. So uh, thank you. And remember, as always... You know, take it off yourself, give back a little bit, be open and dive in. That can really make a difference in your life. Right, Jojo? We're one minute over now. Oh, sorry. Goodbye. <laughs>